Hello and welcome to the section of the Chemistry Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to continue where we just uh, ended in the last section talking about mass percent composition and this time we're going to dive and take this discussion a little bit closer to what we call empirical formulas uh, in chemistry. Now we, uh, in the volume one of the Chemistry Tutor, we've actually discussed the definition of what the empirical formula of a compound is and how it relates to the molecular formula. But just to give you a little bit of a refresher in case you've forgotten, basically the molecular formula is reality. That's what really exists out there. If you could zoom in on an atom of, or a molecule of something, that would be the numbers and the subscripts there in that molecular formula would really be what's built in that molecule, right? But um, the empirical formula is basically the lowest, uh, what am I trying to say, the lowest and smallest ratio that you can have between elements. So it may not be reality, but it does accurately reflect the ratio of the different elements. Let me give you an example of that to, to solidify that so that you can really understand what this is. All right, so a molecular formula for um, hydrogen peroxide, something that you know about, so you have it in your medicine cabinet, is H2O2. This is hydrogen peroxide, right? Uh, so if you could zoom in, if you could take your bottle of peroxide and open it up, pour it out and get a microscope and get really close up on it, you would see that it's two atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen. That's really what's bound into the molecular form, right? But the empirical formula would not be H2O2, it would just be HO. Okay, so the empirical formula is basically uh, the smallest ratio of the atoms in there. So you see here I have H2O2. So what I'm, this basically says is that for every two atoms of hydrogen, I have two atoms of oxygen. And that's what's really bound in the molecule. But ratio-wise, two to two, which means two hydrogen to two oxygen, is really the same ratio as one to one. Yeah, I can have two red peanut, uh, peanut M&Ms and two yellow peanut butter M&Ms, and I can say the ratio is two to two. But we all know that that same ratio of two to two is also one to one. It just means that for every red one, I also have a yellow one. For every two red ones, I have two yellow ones, right? So that's the difference. This guy is really how they're bound. The empirical formula is just when you take these subscripts and if you can divide them by some number where that you can divide everything in the compound by the same number and get something reduced, that's empirical. It's like simplifying a fraction. You know that four halves, or let's say uh, uh, two fourths is one half because you were taught a long time ago that you look at the fraction and you say, hey, can I divide top and bottom by some number to give me a reduced fraction? Well, I can divide top by two, giving me that. I can divide the bottom by two, giving me that. Well, when I look at this, it's the same thing. I can divide this by two, giving me one. I can divide this by two, giving me one. So this is sort of simplified. So you can think of the empirical formula as like simplified, uh, you know, like you, like you simplify a fraction almost, right? Why do we care about empirical formulas? Well, why do you care? I mean, if this is reality, and this is what we always use in our chemical, you know, in our real um, uh, dis discussions of like chemical reactions and when we calculate mass percent composition, all that stuff, we're going to be using the molecular formula. But why do we care about the empirical formula? The reason is because if you discover a new uh, compound in nature, something that's never been observed before, and you have absolutely no idea what the, um, uh, the uh, actual formula is, then what you're going to do is you're going to shovel a spoonful of this unknown material into your mass spectrometer, which is going to shoot a bunch of beams 